Good afternoon, Peace Point of View, and let me take just a moment to welcome you and to express gratitude and thanks for the gift of your presence. Um, Many times we don't look at our presence with family or friends or in times certainly like this as being a gift, but I have discovered uh, over the last 46 years of ministry uh, through uh, the uh, ministry of my father before me that presence is a gift and being here means a lot. Ashley and his family means a lot to them to see that uh, you have thought enough to come and uh, of them and certainly of, uh, of their mother, uh, Miss Margaret uh, Naylor Dixon, Arlene Naylor Dixon, and we're here not to have a funeral, but um, I started a long time ago in these ministry to bring this as a celebration, and so I want that to be in your mind and in your heart right now. I want you to think about celebrating life. Um, when we gather together like this, it's so important uh, how our mind and our heart is set. And so I believe that uh, uh, it is a, um, maybe just an opportunity for me to set your mind and heart. Uh, just simply to think about loss, and it is loss, and it is time to have grief uh, uh, and that kind of uh, feeling and emotional. But it's also a time to remember and to celebrate and to uh, set our minds and set our hearts uh, together. I will sit mine with you, though I did not know Miss uh, uh, Dixon personally yet. I will sit my mind and my heart with you to celebrate with you her living and her life. May we pray right now. Heavenly Father, we're grateful and thankful that whenever we gather together, when we request and desire your presence, that you gift us with your presence as well. I pray that the gift of your presence would settle in the spirit and heart of each individual that is here today. And that, Lord, uh, we would just sense uh, that you are drawing near to us because, Lord, the hearts are heavy, spirits are heavy, and, Lord, uh, yes, there is the feeling of loss and emptiness, Lord, and the missing of the voice and of the life and of the personality of this uh, mother and loved one, Lord, uh, that, Lord, uh, uh, is remembered today. But, Lord, uh, the celebration does not have to end, uh, though, Lord, the physical presence of uh, our, of this loved one is missing yet Lord in their hearts and in their minds uh, they live on and, and she will live on and continually as long as they remember her and I know in my, in my heart and I believe in my spirit uh, that as I remember my loved ones they too will remember her thank you for that Lord now I pray that you would reach down and whatever and however the depth of their, their feeling of loss or grief may be get a little lower Lord with your hand Hold them and lift them up uh, and comfort them by your spirit, by your word. Uh, for we give thanks and give praise uh, that this is done in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. It would not uh, be, uh, I would not be uh, uh, thankful to the call and responsibility that I have as a minister if I did not draw your attention to just a few scriptures uh, here this afternoon. Uh, the psalmist said, uh, Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. All thy ways and thy billows have gone over me. He further says in the psalm, Like a father will pity his children, so the Lord will pity them that fear him, for he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust, and he remembers our weaknesses. And in Psalm 25, the psalm says, Unto thee, O Lord, I lift up my voice, or lift up my soul. Turn to me and have mercy upon me, for I am feeling afflicted and desolate, and the troubles of my heart are enlarged. Well, bring me out of my distress and look upon my affliction and my pain. And I will give you thanks and praise. Uh, Psalm 116. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. For when I was brought low, God helped me. And this is my comfort in my time of grief and need. And then finally, uh, the psalmist uh, calls our attention to look unto the Lord. Uh, in Psalm 121 and verse 1 and 2. I will lift up my eyes to the hill. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made both heaven and earth. And then, of course, uh, God himself would speak to us uh, and would uh, give us uh, some uh, word today. Uh, for uh, in Isaiah 41, the Lord says in verse 10, Fear not, again, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. As I pray, I pray that the Lord will reach down a little deeper than what you feel in your grief, your feeling of loss, and you will feel the touch of His hand and feel the touch of His blessing and presence there with you. 
Whenever we reach uh, these uh, moments uh, in our lives, and unfortunately we never know when they will come, many times uh, uh, it comes to people in their youth, it comes to families, in their young, young families, it comes uh, in, uh, in the middle of our ages, and, and uh, it comes certainly as we grow older. We realize that we know that uh, death has entered uh, in uh, and taken the body of this one, but the soul of the loved one, uh, God, uh, God takes hold of that. That belongs to him, but it is uh, left to us in our the, in our hearts and spirits and minds uh, that we uh, keep the memories. And that is what I want you to celebrate with today. All the memories you have uh, of uh, of uh, Miss uh, Dixon, remembering her and remembering uh, uh, the, the uh, wonderful experiences and times you have there. For in the heart you have, you keep the love, and your faith uh, is there, and you give thanks to the Lord. Uh, one of the one of those greatest things uh, that uh, we have uh, ever uh, been given by God uh, over all other creation is the wonderful uh, experience and the ability to remember. Um, we're, uh, you know, uh, scientists, those that study uh, uh, animals, uh, not sure how much they remember. They can be trained and they can be uh, uh, led to uh, do certain things, and that's good. And uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, in entertainment and joy uh, it brings. But God has blessed us with the ability to recall and remember our loved ones. And so I want to, I want to challenge you, uh, Mr. Ashley, I want to challenge you, and I want to challenge this family, and this daughter, I want to challenge you. Remember and let the memories build up and let them be a strength to you. Uh, as I talked with uh, Mr. Ashley yesterday on the telephone, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, uh, her life, and uh, uh, he took with me uh, uh, when he said uh, she was like a uh, Mr. Do, uh, Dr. Doolittle's wife. Uh, if he had a wife, uh, she would be Miss Doolittle. And her love for animals, horses especially, uh, we talked about that. And then he said, but he didn't stop there. He said uh, there were birds that had to be uh, fed with bird feeders. Uh, there was deer corn that had to be placed uh, and put out. And no doubt there was probably other animal squirrels. And uh, you put out enough uh, uh, bird feed, you put out enough uh, deer corn, uh, you'll draw some uh, uh, raccoons, you'll draw some possums. Uh, You'll draw some uh, squirrels, you'll draw some other animals. And so um, to be gifted in that way is a wonderful uh, And to have that kind of love of God's creation of animals is a blessing. Uh, and no doubt it blessed her. No doubt it, I'm sure it gave her much joy to uh, if she was able to see and watch uh, the feeders or watch uh, when uh, the animals or deer or whatever came up and uh, they uh, partook of uh, what she had uh, given unto them uh, in a time like winter when we're in now sometimes. Uh, to find enough to get by uh, uh, the animals. Uh, uh, they are blessed when we do those kinds of things for them. But she was uh, not only that, uh, but uh, uh, did she enjoy that? Uh, but I uh, understand that, that she uh, was a retired school teacher. And being a school teacher is a, uh, which when I learned that, I thought of it to think about that. I thought about how that she has invested so many, into so many lives, uh, not only the subject she taught, uh, but uh, uh, she taught from her own heart uh, and her own life as well, I'm sure. Uh, I, maybe you can remember teachers you had. Maybe you can remember that one special teacher or someone uh, that seemingly uh, went uh, above and beyond their way uh, or their normal uh, duty of teaching uh, and was a friend uh, or uh, was a mentor to you in some way. Uh, I look at teachers that way. I have a, a son and a daughter-in-law and I have another daughter and I have a daughter that are all teachers and so I related to that when I read that and I thought about that and, and I thought about how that when we talk about their involvement, uh, I thought about how uh, uh, Miss Dixon had involvement there. In fact, uh, uh, when I was talking with someone, we were discussing the service, <coughs> someone was asked, said, I believe she was my English teacher. I'm not sure if she was an English teacher at all, uh, but uh, she said she might have something else uh, locally, but uh, they felt maybe that uh, that was that's what they had her for. And they said, well, it's been so many years, I can't hardly remember what it was. I just remember she was a teacher at the school. And that's, a, uh, I pray that would be a blessing to all of her students and those that may hear of her, of her homegoing, uh, that they will uh, remember her and they will be thankful for uh, the investment she made in their lives. Uh, she made an investment uh, in your lives, you that are members of the family. She made an investment. Uh, we think of investment many times only about uh, in the financial uh, realm, the financial uh, uh, things. Uh, but investment uh, of love, 
Investment, as I said, of presence and time. Investments of being with uh, one another. Investments of investing uh, in uh, saving and in cherishing the memories that you have are so vitally and important for all of us. Uh, there's some things about memory that, uh, and I'm not going to be long here, but I want to make some very important things to you because I believe those memories are, are going to be a, a real strength and a blessing to you. Now, the, the, I came across this little uh, a point that it says uh, memories. Life can never stay the same no matter how we try. Our hands can never stop the clock of life from ticking by. But love remains unchanging in the care of sorrowing hearts. For as the life, the love of life is still, the love of memory starts. And how true that is uh, for you already that your memories and things about her have already been triggered. Uh, my prayer is for every family and for you of the family as you face this time and you miss her and you miss her being with you, that you remember that the Heavenly Father will help bring back maybe even memories that seem to have somehow been covered up uh, with all of the experiences of life and responsibilities and things uh, that we have in life, uh, that uh, they are recalled and they're remembered. Uh, I shared this uh, recently uh, in uh, some uh, services of remembrance that we sponsor uh, throughout uh, the time of the season of Christmas. Uh, that our memories are like a house, you know, like a special house uh, that we are building on the inside of us. And we are constantly adding to that house and we are filling up that house. We're filling it up with love and laughter of uh, remembrances. We're filling it up with those past moments and events of, of being together and residing together and living together and sharing together and coming together in special times. Uh, and it is from and with that uh, that uh, we relive again and that we uh, think of those happy times and joyous times. Uh, but uh, you might think, well, uh, just like the physical house we build, uh, uh, it comes uh, to a completion. But the building of memory does not have to stop. It can continue to go on. And it will go on for you uh, forever. Uh, uh, that house is, uh, it will always be there. And when uh, one floor gets full, just add another floor. Just build a home. Maybe you've met that someone knows someone to build a home, and as their family grew, they had to build on another bedroom, or they put on another great room, or a or living room, or something, and they had to build on to it. And so, as I remember, seemingly, uh, I might fill up one floor of the house, we just add another floor, and we just build on, uh, and we just grow, uh, and we just share. The wonderful thing about memories, and I will close, and I will stop, and we'll have the committal in prayer. The wonderful thing about memories is they are not, they are not to be kept. They are to be shared. They are to be spoken. They are to be told. Even if you say, well, I don't really have anybody I can tell you, tell it to yourself. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I tell, often tell myself about memories and I recall that over and over. I'm riding down the road and just something triggers a memory about someone in my family or some loved one or someone, a friend or someone. That uh, has passed and gone on uh, uh, to meet the Lord. And, and I remember them. And so I will think about times and various things that are there. They are to be shared. And so uh, when the opportunity comes, and it will come, it will come, it really will, it will come. You will be able to share a memory of Miss uh, Dixon with someone. That something will trigger it, something somebody will say. Maybe a special food that she enjoyed, or maybe she prepared, or she liked. Uh, be something you may lay right by and, and see a and, and see a deer uh, across the field there, uh, and uh, maybe a uh, uh, the ground searching around trying to find something to eat, uh, or you will hear the singing of the songbird outside the window of uh, your living uh, in your home uh, or where you're working. Uh, there will be things that will trigger those memories when they do. Uh, uh, don't hold them in. Share them. If there's someone there that you can share with, share them with them. Let them uh, be uh, uh, filled with joy as well. Uh, again, from floor to floor to floor, from day to day to day, from time to time to time, share your memories. What a blessing and a wonderful thing they would be. As I talked with uh, Mr. Ashley, I asked him, I said, was there anything particular that uh, you had in mind or you thought about uh, uh, Ms. Dixon that you would like uh, me to share or say? Uh, he said he remembered a prayer by St. Francis of Assisi. And uh, so uh, uh, it is entitled A Simple Prayer. And uh, I will use that to hear uh, in the closing as uh, our prayer and then as a committal and blessing. A simple prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me show so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not 
so let's seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Written by St. Francis of Assisi. What a wonderful commentary. I pray on the life of this loved one, that she was one who, that in time she gave pardon, she gave hope, she shared life, she shared joy, she consoled and she gave understanding and certainly love. For the best investment that anyone can make in anyone's life, in the lives of friends or family or people we know, is to love and to let that love be a blessing. For as much as this please our God, Father in heaven, in his wise providence, to take out of this world the soul of this dear deceased loved one, mother, and friend of many, and one who invested in many lives, who therefore, therefore will commit her to her entombment, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, believing and looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come, that is true and assured to us by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For when those and the corruptible bodies of those who have died in Him, they shall be raised and changed and made like unto His own glorious body. Now unto Him that is able to keep you and all of us from falling and to present you faultless before His presence and His glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. May the grace, the amazing grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you of today and in the days and in the weeks and in the years to come as you celebrate the life of this loved one. And we pray again. Heavenly Father, thank you for how, Lord, this life has touched so many. There are those here today, Lord, that I believe, that, Lord, that even more precious will become the memories of the Lord of this loved one and of this one who has touched their lives. Thank you for the lively lives and young people that, Lord, some of them are grown and have children of their own, but, Lord, uh, there is something within them whether they ever give the credit to their teachers or not, Lord, yet, Lord, uh, there's something that was shared and invested in them that has done good for them. I pray that uh, this family would uh, see that. I pray that the, these friends would see that. I pray that others will remember and see that and rejoice in knowing, Lord. Uh, thank you again, Lord, for how you sent the Holy Spirit in your word to comfort hearts. For the psalmist said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear, for your presence is with me. And Lord, we remember it as a walk through. And Lord, a valley can only exist because it is surrounded by mountains. And mountains, Lord, have always represented your strength in your word. And I pray that the strength of your mountain will, oh Lord, bring this family through. And that, Lord, it says that death is but a shadow. And a shadow can only exist because there is a light. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And we too are made the light and we are to shine and we are to reflect Jesus in our living and our lives. Bless I pray again the remembrance and memories that the Lord are so sweet and happy and precious to them that will become even more valuable in the days and weeks to come. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, let me give thanks to you, the family, for allowing me to have a part in this celebration. I am honored, and uh, again, thank all of you for being here today. Uh, you are blessed, and uh, I know this family appreciates it.